Hi, today we are going to upgrade the hard drive inside of this 27 inch iMac to a solid state drive. Now to do this repair specifically on the 27 inch, you have to get a mounting bracket because we are going from a 3.5 inch hard drive form factor to a 2.5 inch form factor. And you also need a thermal sensor. With this specific iMac, Apple paired the thermal sensors into the hard drive itself. So if you ever replace it or you go with a solid state drive, you do have to get a thermal sensor which bridges the SATA and power from the actual logic board to the uh, solid state. The thermal sensor is right here. You can get this kit directly from uh, OWC, Other World Computing, or MacSales.com. It's usually about a $40 uh, sensor, but to have your fan not run at full speed, you have to get one of these sensors. So we're just going to go ahead and dive straight into this repair. And for this repair, the screen itself is adhered to the rest of the frame. In the past, you would use suction cups. We actually have some suction cups here. And you would put it onto the screen and pop it right off. Since the glass in the LCD on this mo uh, model is bonded, we're going to use this tool. And this tool you can get from either Otherworld Computing or iFixit. Basically, it's a plastic pizza cutter. So let's go ahead and get into it. What you want to do is just go back and forth with the plastic cutter. Don't immediately go in deep. You'll just kind of work your way down, breaking through the adhesive on here. And once you get to the end of the pizza, <laughs> I keep calling it a pizza roller, but once you get to the end of the plastic roller where it's starting to touch the handle itself, you pretty much have cut through the majority of the adhesive. So I can see going through here, I don't feel any more tape. I'm just going to check this side too, just to make sure. Everything looks good. So at this point to be safe and not to have the LCD fall out towards us, I'm going to unplug the power cable and lay this down on its back. And then we'll continue the rest. We have some more adhesive right here on the right side and some up here, and that's going to be where the Wi-Fi sensor or our, the Wi-Fi antenna is located. And lay it down just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull up a little bit on the LCD and I'm going to look to see if there's any more adhesive that's holding it down. And everything looks pretty solid. We have some adhesive right here. All right, and this part's really important. So you have your cables here, your display port cable for the LCD itself and the uh, there's another cable. I don't know what this one is off the top of my head. This is either going to be a bright a brightness control, uh, such as like the LCD, uh, but this also is a very important cable too. Make sure these are both unplugged before you lift up. And once it's lift it's unplugged, now you can lift up the LCD panel itself. And what I'm doing is just checking to make sure all the adhesive is broken on the side and everything looks good. Now there's a little trick you can do at this point. Inside of the LCD, the iMac itself, there is a pull tab on each side of the iMac. This camera doesn't really do any justice trying to show it. But if you can grab that pull tab, just go to the center. Here we are, so I got the right side of the pull tab. I'm just gonna pull it out to the center like so. So that side, the bottom part of the LCD where it's on the frame is loose. We're going to do the same thing to the left side. Make sure you have a really strong grip on the LCD while you do this so that it doesn't slip. 
So now that I pulled both of those off, the LCD panel is just going to come off like that. For now, we're just going to set this to the side. Now that we have our LCD panel removed, we have full access to the rest of the iMac. So as mentioned here, the original hard drive inside is a 3.5 inch hard drive. And what we're wanting to do is go down to a solid state, which is 2.5 inches. This solid state has already had all the data transferred. So we're gonna just go through the process of replacing the hard drive and putting the thermal sensor. The hard drive itself is gonna have two screws, or I'm sorry, it has two brackets with two screws on each side, so a total of four screws. And we need to get to the bracket that's right here underneath the speaker. So we're gonna have to remove the speaker for that. The speaker's held in with two T10 torque screws. So just loosen that. We're not gonna remove the entire speaker. We're just gonna move it to the side like so. Now we have access to the screws that hold the bracket down. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. Oh, and another thing, that I actually already forgot. If you have access to one of these styrofoam uh, mounts, this is very handy for making sure your LCD doesn't move back and forth, keeping things intact. It wedges right underneath the frame itself. And it does a really good job preventing the rest of the iMac from folding forward. I use that for many repairs, especially when we put the LCD back on. I will use this so that the panel doesn't try to fall out. But for now, we'll keep it hooked up here. Back onto the repair. So now with our left bracket removed from the frame, we're going to slide it out to the left. Just set that to the side. The hard drive itself will slide out from the right bracket, and we can go ahead and unplug the SATA cable from the hard drive. So the hard drive itself has four standoffs. We're going to transfer these over to our new 3.5 inch mount. Standoffs appear to be held down with T8 screws. Set the hard drive to the side, and now we'll get our bracket. So one thing to keep in mind if the orientation of the bracket, and we'll get more into it when we put the solid state in, is going to be where does the SATA and the power connector, the power pins on the hard drive go. So we can see it's on the back here. So the SATA, the solid state is going to fit in the same orientation. Let's see, we have different mounts right here. I'll show you more of it when we actually get the solid state installed. Let's set the hard drive to the side and put those mounting screws into the bracket. When choosing your mounting bracket, you want to make sure that your mounting bracket is a full 3.5 inch form factor. There are some mounting brackets that are smaller that will adapt a 2.5 inch hard drive to a 3.5 inch slot, but those are going to be more for PCs. This one, if you look at the mounting bracket itself, is exactly the same size of the hard drive. So this specifically is uh, made by Corsair. It's the double-decker. You can actually put two 2.5-inch drives in here. Uh, we only use this for one drive, though. And it comes out to be the same thickness of a 3.5-inch drive, so you don't have any bulkiness popping off of the hard drive itself onto the back of the LCD panel. You don't have to worry about that. So now comes the solid state. So what I was talking about before is the data pin and the power pin. Just gonna make sure that it's in the same positioning that is on the mechanical drive. So here we have it on the right side. We're gonna keep this up here on the right side as well. And the solid state, or the bracket came with its own hardware. So we can mount the 2.5 inch drive into the bracket. And it's just four Phillips screws. And 
And this is what your finished product will look like. So we have the 2.5 inch solid state and it's already screwed into the mount itself and the mounting bracket, the 3.5 inch mounting bracket adapter has four mounting screws coming off the side. These are gonna be the screws that go back into the computer itself. And once again, if we compare them side by side, height, it is the same height. It is the same thickness. When putting your solid state in here, make sure that it is even and flush with the end of the adapter. You don't wanna have it stick out too high. Um, this is just gonna prevent the SATA cable and power cable from bending too much. We don't want that to happen. So at this point you can do, we're, we're gonna get the adapter ready. At this point you can do one or two things. You can either go ahead and just mount in the, the adapter as is, or this cable to give ourselves some slack. What I like to do is remove the screw on this top right screw on the right bracket and we're going to flush this SATA power adapter to the right side instead of the left side of the standoff. This allows for more slack so you don't have so much tension on the the, the board of the solid state itself. So I have the SATA cable to the right side of the bracket. I'm gonna put that screw back in. All right, and let's go ahead and get the rest of our hard drive ready. So we're putting the solid state mounting bracket back in. And we'll need the left bracket Put it onto the 3.5 inch adapter and just screw it back in. And now we're ready for the adapter. And so take your male part of the adapter, plug it into the female of the SATA cable itself. And what we're going to do here at this point is we're going to bend it back mm -hmm. like so and have the female part of the SATA power adapter on the thermal sensor plugged into the solid state itself. So when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. I know it kind of looks like a mess right now, but this actually has more slack than if you had the right cable underneath. And the last part is the thermal sensor itself. Thermal sensor just has double-sided adhesive and it's held down with uh, just a film. So we're going to peel the off the film with our tweezers here and put it onto our solid state. And that's just about it. Put our speaker back. And at this point, before I apply the new adhesive strips so that we can close up the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and take this outside and give it a complimentary dusting. This one's not that bad, but since we're already inside of the unit, we'll make it a little bit more air efficient. All right, and we're back. So the next step before we get ready to close up this guy is we're gonna have our existing adhesive that was on the LCD beforehand. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it at this time. And if you have the Apple OEM adhesive, if this has never been opened up before, then this adhesive comes off fairly easy. And what I'm using now is a black spudger, a black stick, just using the flat end of it for the parts that wouldn't come off with the tweezers. So just like now, when it ripped, you take the flat end of a black stick, if you have access to one, and just push up against the frame, and you can keep pulling. And just like on the LCD, or just like on the frame itself on the iMac, the LCD itself is gonna have adhesive as well. 
So for now, I'm going to set the iMac to the side. And you can see some of the adhesive still, like on the corner, it looks like this felt material. So how I approach this is I lay this down on a flat surface. And before I do any work, I always make sure that my table is clean. It doesn't have any debris or glass from a previous repair, so we don't cause any damage to the LCD. And if you have tweezers, just grab them like we did before. If you have a black stick, you're going to use the flat end of a black stick and push up against the adhesive to grab a strip of it and just pull it up. Try to use a black stick if you can. You don't want to use anything sharp because underneath the adhesive, you do have like a black tape underneath it. It's almost like a protection tape. But underneath that itself is the physical black paint on the glass itself. So you can scratch the glass and it just doesn't look professional. If you use a nylon black stick, you don't have to worry about scratching the glass. So we've removed all the adhesive off of our LCD. I'm going to move the LCD back to where it was. Now let's go ahead and start applying the new adhesive. Now if you buy the kit, that comes with the thermal sensor from Otherworld Computing. The kit will come with its own plastic cutter, also come with its own adhesive kit. If all you have is a thermal sensor and you don't have the adhesive, you can buy the adhesive from Otherworld Computing, but you have to use this type of adhesive. And the adhesive is going to have numbers on it. Numbers are just going to show different placements. And um, there's even a manual that comes with this, I believe, to where it shows you where to put the adhesive. We've done this so many times, we just don't even pay attention to the numbers at this point. But don't use Tessa tape, don't use red tape, don't use Flex Seal. We have done Flex Seal, or we have seen an, an iMac that had Flex Seal in here once. And that was a very, very risky repair to disassemble. Make sure you get iMac adhesive. The most you're going to be spending about $10 for it. So don't cheap out. Another thing on this adhesive is it does have holes in it. And the point for that is in the iMac itself, there are holes or mounts. You can use a nylon black stick and align the hole on the tape with the hole on the iMac itself. And that will kind of give you a good position of where the adhesive needs to be. If it was a 2017, there's typically a microphone down here at the bottom, and you want to make sure that you just leave the microphone exposed so that you don't cover it up, or else your internal microphone's not going to work. We don't have to worry about that on this one, so we'll just continue the taping job. And this part is a matter uh, open to debate, and it's where do you put the bottom adhesive? On the manual itself from Otherworld Computing, it says to put the, the adhesive at the bottom of the LCD itself and not onto the frame. You can do it that way. However, a matter of preference, I like to put it directly onto the frame itself. So if you do decide to do the bottom method, you have a screw right above the Apple logo, and that's exactly the middle of the iMac. So I line up the bottom adhesive to that screw, and then we'll have a little bit of a pull tab or a flange left here on the left side. That's why you're supposed to put it onto the uh, LCD itself, is so that you get the flange lined up perfectly. This method works too.
So at this point, we have our solid state, we have our thermal sensor plugged into our solid state, we have all that onto a 2.5 inch to a 3.5 inch adapter, all of our screws are put back in place, the iMac has been dusted out, and we have applied our LCD adhesive. The adhesive has been removed off both the frame and the LCD itself. So at this point, we are going to lay this back on its back, we're going to lay down the LCD and plug in the two connections uh, for the, I should know what this cable is, <laughs> but one of them is going to be our display port and we're going to test out the iMac before we close anything up. Just in case we miss something or we accidentally unplug something or something's unscrewed, just want to make sure everything works. Before I lay it down, we remove our iMac stand and let's set this back on its back. So I have my LCD all connected onto the logic board and before I pick it up I'll take some Kapton tape. It's just a type of electronics tape that's not going to leave any residue behind. I'm going to tape up the sides and the top of the LCD. That way I can pick up the iMac without fear of it falling forward. And we can do a quality control test before we remove the adhesive strip pull tabs. All right, so we got our iMac turned on. So the first thing that you'll notice is that it's taking a long time to boot up. And the reason for that is because it is missing its startup drive, the startup disk. This hard drive right here has been programmed into the firmware through the settings that when the computer turns on, look for this startup disk. Then it will automatically boot up. If it can't find this startup disk, it boots to the next bootable partition. So now we can see it's booting. If you don't want to wait, when you turn on the iMac, hold down the Alt or Option button, and that will give you the option to choose your hard drive, which is going to be the solid state, and boot into it. So now let's go to About This Mac, check the storage. In this case, we upgraded from a 1 terabyte mechanical drive to a 2 terabyte solid state. The computer is acknowledging the 2 terabyte solid state is installed. And at this point, we're just going to follow our quality control checklist. Okay, so looking at it, everything does pass our quality control test. So at this point, the most important crucial step when it comes to doing a solid state repair or any hard drive upgrade for any Mac in general is to change the startup disk. And how you're going to do that is in System Preferences, we are going to navigate to Startup Disk. We're going to click this padlock here and select the hard drive. Since there's only one hard drive in here, it's the only hard drive listed. And we click Reset. Are you sure you want to reset? Reset. And this part always takes a little while. Right now, Mac OS is telling the firmware and the computer on the logic board to assign the solid state that is inside the iMac to be the new startup disk. So this will take about a minute or so. Afterwards, when it restarts, it will acknowledge the solid state and immediately load up. So let's let that do its thing for a minute. All right, so the computer is now restarted. And there it goes, detected the solid state, it's booting up. And we're in, so the startup disk has now been selected. Since we know that everything works, at this point we're going to go ahead and shut down the computer and pull the adhesive tabs off so that we can bond the LCD together. Now a very popular method for closing up this iMac 
Very popular method for closing up this iMac is to take some painter's tape and grow across the bottom of the iMac just to hold it together so you can lift it up just enough but keep the LCD and the frame in place. Usually what we do here is we have two technicians that just manually eyeball it, but I'm gonna try out the painter tape idea. Let me go grab some. All right, so we got our painter's tape here, and we wanna make sure that the glass and the frame are lined up on both sides, and everything looks pretty good. So let's give this a shot. So I, I've seen this method done. I've just personally have never done it before. Okay, let's give this a shot. It would help if I unplug the power cable. I think about it, we weren't supposed to go around the edge like that. Just to hold the LCD down. Okay. For this method, I'm still going to lay it down on its back so we don't have any accidental LCDs that fall forward. So let's remove our Kapton tape that we put on here. So we have our Kapton tape removed. Now we're going to lift the LCD back up, and since we have the painter's tape on, the LCD should not move. It should stay in the orientation we currently have it. We're going to lift it up just enough to where we can get underneath and pull our tabs. I'm going to unplug the cables to see if this helps out. Okay, and now see why OWC recommends putting the bottom adhesive down on the LCD instead of the frame. If you're going to be using the painter's tape method for aligning up your LCD, that it's a lot easier to remove the adhesive off of the LCD panel itself rather than from the frame. Yeah, absolutely. That method with the painter's tape requires that you put the adhesive onto the LCD panel itself and not on the frame. The method I'm used to doing is putting the adhesive onto the frame, the bottom adhesive that is, onto the frame itself. And then from there having a second technician help me line it up by eye. But if you're doing this yourself, I would recommend putting the adhesive, the bottom adhesive, onto the LCD panel and using the painter's tape method for keeping your LCD aligned with your frame. So I learned something new today as well. Make sure our connections are still in. Okay, everything looks good. And as you're closing it up, make sure to keep an eye on the eyesight right here, that you don't have any dust or any debris in the way as you're closing it up. Everything looks pretty solid. Now, before I start applying too much pressure, I'm gonna put our foam back underneath the iMac. Uh, peel back the painter's tape just to see how aligned that kept it. And that's pretty spot on. It did not move at all. Our glass is perfectly flush to our frame. 
we don't have any debris in the eyesight. So at this point, take a microfiber cloth. If you buy the OWC uh, toolkit for upgrading to a solid state, it should come with a pretty large microfiber cloth. If you have it, just take the microfiber cloth and apply pressure as you go around the entire LCD. So we got our chime, we got our Apple logo, we found the startup disk. And that booted up pretty quickly to me at 701, that was quick. And that is a successful solid state drive upgrade. So at this point, we're just going to make this clean, uh, remove any debris that's on the aluminum itself, just to make it look pretty. But that is that. That is how you upgrade your iMac, the 27 inch that has the 3.5 inch hard drive, looks like this, from the 3.5 inch mechanical drive to a 2.5 inch solid state drive. Solid states have many benefits to them. They're about five times faster than a fully working mechanical drive. If your drive is beginning to fail, that number can increase. Uh, it can go 10, 20%, really depends on what the read write speed of your failing mechanical drive is. Solid states have been uh, dropping in price, so they are a more cost effective option within the last two years. Just if you're gonna do this repair, make sure that you don't just get the solid state. You also need to get the adhesive. You also need to get the 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch adapter and the thermal sensor. Those are very, very crucial steps. So I hope this has been very informative. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments down below. If you don't feel like doing this repair yourself, you're more than welcome to ship it to us at iRevive. Uh, we do have a mail-in form on there as well, and we'll see you in the next one.